I'm ready to preach my heart out. Are you ready to receive what God has for you? That's great. Four of you. That's awesome. That's okay. All you need is a few. We're two are gathered. He's here. Um, hey, we're starting a series called I Love You So Bad. And so um, it has nothing to do with a band called Lanny or anything. I'm just kidding. But uh, I want to talk to you about relationships. Say relationships. Some of you automatically think uh, of a dating relationship, and yes, that is true. Yes, we will get there. Yes, I want you to have healthy relationships. I want you to have a healthy dating relationship because there's too many people having unhealthy relationships. And so my hope and my prayer as we've been going into this uh, next couple weeks is this, that God, I pray that you would give me wisdom to say exactly what young people need to hear. And so I'm going to do my best to do that tonight. But uh, I got a question. How many, uh, how many uh, Twitter fans are in here? You're a Twitter, you're a Twitter fan. Twitter, Twitter. Bebo, we know you're a Twitter fan. All right, calm down over there. Uh, Instagram, you're like, I'm just an Instagrammer. It's easy. I feel like I can do everything there. It's all good. Um, Snapchatters, where are the Snapchatters at? Where are my, fa- where are my Facebookers? <laughs> like, my mom's there. <laughs> Mom. Where's my MySpacers? You know you're old if you have a MySpace. You know it's a little weird if you still have a MySpace. So I just throw that out there. Probably just move on um, something else because MySpace no longer really is happening. But there's a, there's a little phrase that's been happening, uh, and I hear it a lot in, in conversations. People are like, man, I'm just trying to slide into our DMs. I'm like, what do you mean slide, first of all? Like, you can, you can slide, slide, slide in there, you know. Or I heard, man, I hope she slides into my DMs. I'm like, are you praying to the Lord? Is that, is that what's happening? Um, and so I, uh, I, I kind of went to Urban Dictionary to see what it meant, and it just meant this, like trying to be friends or trying to flirt. How many of you have ever slid into somebody's DMs trying to flirt before? Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. Carly slid into your DMs, Hagen. That's what, oh, you slid into Carly. Okay, that's how it happened. I'll tell you this. There, we didn't have Instagram back in the day, but me and my wife, Facebook, I liked her picture. And now we're married with two kids. So... I'm not giving any of you hope. That's not what I'm saying. First of all, we, we knew each other for like 25 years, okay? We grew up together. But I said, dang, she cute. Like. <laughs> and then she liked one of my pictures, and I said, it's on like Donkey Kong. It's over. So then I commented, and then she said, I'm madly in love with you. I was like, I know. Let's get married. And that's not really how it happened at all. Actually, our first date was to a Hillsong concert. That's how spiritual we are, okay? Just throw that out there. So find... Find, it was actually, she bought the tickets. Find a girl, guys, who wants to take you to a Hillsong concert. Uh, I don't think I ever paid her for the ticket either. I'm sorry, I love you. You know, forgive me. I was cheap. I bought you dinner that night, though, okay? But, thanks, thanks. If you're dating a guy and he's like, we're going Dutch, drop him like a bad habit. That does not should take place. But, so sliding into your DMs, I found a couple of things that I want to show you about some people who maybe potentially have slid into some DMs. I would like to show you the first one on the screen this evening. Turn your attention to the screen. It's number one. It literally is labeled number one. <laughs> Did y'all know Bebo was here? I got you, Bebo. So... That really kind of does look like you a little bit. And that probably would have been the the style of shirt that you would have worn as a kid. So there's there's a guy who's like, I just slid into her DMs. And some of you are like, I've made that face before. Here's number two. Here's another another guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I had a haircut like that, okay? But he's happy. Like, he's like, it worked, guys. It worked. Now, the next one is my personal favorite. My man slid into her DMs. He, my man is living his best life currently. But here's, here's the last one I want to show you. Maybe, maybe it'll make you think a little bit. I also heard that phrase. Pastor Mark, it goes down in the DMs. I said, what goes down in the DMs? They're like, don't worry about it. 
I said, oh. I just want to remind you that Jesus is always watching. Every DM you send, your mom may not see it, but Jesus sees it. And your mama not the judge. Jesus is the judge. So we'll just leave that there. That's just there. So those were a couple of things that I found and that I saw of people who have slid into your DMs. Uh, and um, if you don't know what DM stands for, it stands for direct message. Some of you are like, I did not know that this whole time. Everybody always just said it and I didn't understand it. If you got your Bibles, we're going to go to Ephesians 5 in just a moment. And uh, this recently has become one of my favorite passages of Scripture. And uh, I came across it as I was doing a devotion, and it, and it really, have you ever read something that just kind of jumped out to you? And this really did, and this truly helped me in the way that I'm supposed to live uh, my everyday life. Ephesians chapter 5, starting uh, in verse 1, it says this. It's on the screens. I'll help you all out. Watch what God does, and then you do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but it was extravagant. It was reckless. Gotcha. Some of you are like, can we never sing that song again? We'll let it rest for a little bit, okay? He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. How many of you are grateful and thankful that Jesus gave his very best? He gave you it all. He didn't hold anything back. It wasn't cautious, but it was extravagant. It was messy. But it was still yet so perfect at the same time, the way that he loves you and loves me. Tonight, I want to talk to you about relationships. Everyone say relationships. In order to have healthy relationships, there needs to be some boundaries. Have you ever had to set up some boundaries with some people before? And I'm not even necessarily talking about in a dating relationship because I would hope as young men and women of God, you're doing that already. If you're not, come talk to me. I'll help you. I want you to have a successful dating relationship, okay? And when I set up some boundaries, some of you are like, well, that means everything that we do, we can't do anymore. Probably shouldn't be dating. But have you ever had to set up some boundaries with a friend before? You ever had an overbearing friend? Or a friend that was always in your business? Or a friend that didn't know when to keep their mouth shut? Oh my gosh, people are calling their friends out. She's like, I'm not sitting next to you anymore. Sometimes you have to set up some boundaries with people in order to have healthy relationships. And I've learned this, in my 30 years on planet Earth, in order to have a healthy, successful relationships with other people and or the opposite sex, you first have, a have, you first have to have a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we're not even going to get to dating. We're not even going to get to, you know, all of those other things that I'll say. And you're like, don't say those words that make me cringe. They're coming. Okay, baby, they're coming. Don't worry. Some of you are going to need deliverance. Ah. But in order, in order to have any healthy relationship with people, you first have, a health, have to have a healthy relationship with Jesus. And some of you are going, I don't know why I can't get along with people. I don't know why people bother me. I don't know why this, or I don't know why that. Well, I would question how healthy is your relationship with Jesus right now at the moment. I've learned this. The closer I am to God, the better I handle people. The closer I am to Jesus, the better I handle uh, bosses. The closer I am to Jesus, the better I handle issues. The closer I am to Jesus, the better I handle life. And I guarantee you, if you think about it, the same goes for you. But my fear is we're struggling, we're going through all these different things, and we don't know how to handle certain things because we do not have a healthy relationship or a healthy connection with Jesus right now. But there's three things I want to pull out of this verse, three things that are going to help you have a healthy relationship with other people. Everyone say other people. How many have a hard time loving people? It's okay. My hands up. Because having relationships with other people is sometimes it's messy, sometimes it's difficult. But in order to have a healthy relationship, sometimes having a healthy relationship with somebody means not having a health, not having a relationship with them at all. There's some of you that have people in your life right now that you need to cut off in order to better yourself. Because the problem is you continue to surround yourself with people who are not building you up, they're tearing you down, and you're becoming more like them than you are like Jesus. Three things I want to pull out. First is this, watch. Everyone say watch. In verse one it says, watch what God does and then you do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. I remember growing up as a kid, watching my dad. 
And my dad was the opposite of me. He's really into fitness. And he's like, <sighs> he works out six days a week. And my dad always, I remember when he mowed the lawn, he'd always do it with his shirt off because he was jacked. Or when he washed the car. And I remember being eight years old or nine, somewhere in that area. And I remember coming outside and my dad was mowing the lawn and, and he was in like these short shorts because I was younger, okay? I was in early 90s, so he had some short shorts on, which they're back now, so that works. And uh, some short shorts on and some Reebok shoes, which that's back now too. Guess y'all didn't know that was in style back in the day. Some Reebok shoes and, the, and, and my man had a shirt off. So I walked out and I was like, dad has his shirt off. I want to be like my dad. So I go to my dad. I'm like, dad, let me mow the lawn. Dad's like, no. My dad, I want, to mow, I want to mow the lawn. I want to be like you, dad. I want to be like you, dad. And he's like, no. And I said, well, I want to help. What can I do? And my man had just had me pull some weeds because he didn't trust me with power tools at that point or lawnmowers and every stuff. But I remember other times my dad would be out washing the car and all I wanted to do was help. All I wanted to do was be like my dad and I wanted to do what he was doing because I looked up to my father when I was a kid. I looked up to my dad and, and the way that he took care of things and took care of our family and different stuff like that. And that's what I wanted to do. And I have a, I sometimes work too much and my mind doesn't shut off and, and I try to work my best and I feel like I really get that from my dad who's a hard worker and works his butt off still till today. My man wakes up at three o'clock in the morning. Jesus is not even awake and he's awake and he's driving to work. There's some of you in here, you've never had that person to look up to. You've never had that mother or that father to, to look up to. And so you're going, I, how am I supposed to watch what my parents did and be able to have a healthy relationship? Because all I ever saw was unhealth when I looked at my family. All I ever saw was problems and fighting and drinking, alcohol and drugs. That's all I ever saw when I looked at my parents. How am I supposed to have a healthy relationship? You want to know how you have a healthy relationship? You open this up and look how Jesus lived his life because your heavenly father has modeled the way in which we're called to live. Watch what God does. The problem is we're so blinded by the world that we can't watch what God does. We're so blinded by our own selves or, or what other people have said about us. We cannot physically see what God is doing. And can I encourage you? There's some times in your life daily that you need to pause and watch what God is doing. And learn the way in which he lived his life. Why is it so easy for us to model ourselves after our mom or our dad or a coach or different things like that? Why? Because that's who we spent time with. That's who we were in fellowship with. And so the more time I spent with my dad, the more I wanted to be like my dad. Can I tell you the same would be true in your relationship with Jesus Christ? The more you spend time with Jesus, the more you'll become like Jesus and want to be like Jesus. The problem is you're looking at what the world has to offer and you're going, I'm wanting to be like this person or that person. And God's going, I've modeled the way in which you're supposed to live. I sent my son down to model a perfect life and to die for you. But you're looking everywhere else for the way in which to live. We become most like the people who we spend most time with. Can I ask you this thought tonight? I told you I wasn't going to preach short. How healthy is your relationship with Jesus? And that's a personal question to maybe think in your own mind. How healthy is my relationship with Jesus Christ? Watch is the first thing. Number two is this. Keep company. Ever since company. You ever had company come over to your house that you didn't want to come over? You ever have those people who just invite themselves over to your house? <laughs> that's me. <laughs> It says, keep company with him and learn a life of love. You have unwanted company. It's hard to love him. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but it was extravagant. Can I read this sentence to you that really opened up my mind? It says this, it doesn't matter what relationship we are pursuing, a romantic relationship, a friendship, a family relationship, whatever that looks like, we must love others as much as we love ourselves. If not, our relationships will be riddled with gossip, selfishness, and pain. I think a lot of the times the real reason why we don't have healthy relationship with other people is because we don't have a good relationship with ourselves. And this, this fact has probably been more real lately than it's ever been.
Because the problem is you're listening to the world and you're not listening to God. And so you tend to do things and say things that you begin to hate about yourself. And so you're, you're missing a good relationship. You're like, how do I have a relationship with myself? Do you love yourself? Do you care about yourself? You're never going to have healthy relationships with other people if you first don't have a healthy relationship with your heavenly father and with yourself. And then in turn, those two things have to be lined up in order for you to have healthy relationships with other people. Keep company with God is truly the key of a healthy relationship with yourself. You're looking for love and acceptance from others so much that you degrade yourself to make them happy. I didn't know if I wanted to go here tonight, but I feel like the Lord's leading me to that. Some of you do things that is so out of character for yourself in order to please other people. And some of you lay your head on your pillow at night and you hate yourself for things that you've done. And you wake up the next morning ready to please people all over again. And there's a void and there's this emptiness that is there. And you've lived so long to please other people that you begin to hate yourself. We're called to please one person, and that's Jesus Christ. Live for the approval of one rather than the acceptance of many. That's the way in which God has called you to live. If you have to do things, things that is out of character and out of line with the word of God, to be friends with somebody, to be a part of a group, whatever, that is a group you do not want to be a part of. That is a relationship you do not need to be a part of. It's not the way in which God's called you to live. Three. Number three, it's just simple. It's the end of that passage. Love like that. Everyone say love. Next week, we're going to hit on some heavy topics. So I pray that you would come and be ready. But I think you have to get down this, the basics of relationships. Because if you can't have a healthy relationship with yourself or with God, there's no way any romantic relationship is ever going to work out in your favor. Never. Love the way that Jesus loved. Said this, he didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love God the way that he loves you. Love yourself the way that he loves you, and love other people the way that he loves you. Here's what I've learned. It's difficult to love people. But it's simple. That's what... God has called us to do as Christians is to simply love people. It's hard to love people. That's right. It is hard to love people. I look at the life of Jesus and he still loved people, loved the same people that put him on the cross to die. Nobody's put you on a cross. So you've never had it worse than Jesus had it in that moment, okay? He modeled the way in which we're supposed to live. It's very simple. You want to know how we start making making a a difference, making an impact on our city, on our world, when the church is more in love with Jesus than the world is with sin. That's how we make a difference. When the church is more in love with Jesus than the world is in love with sin. That's simple. I think my pastor told me that 10 years ago, and it's been something that has stuck with me for 10 years of ministry. If we in here can love Jesus more than the world loves sin, that's when our voice is gonna get louder. That's when impact is going to happen. That's when life change and transformation and miracles are gonna begin to take place on your campus and in your home. The more you love Jesus, the more you love him, the better you're going to be, the healthier the relationship you're going to have with other people. Can I tell you this? If you're in a dating relationship, there's no way you can take care of the other person if you can't take care of yourself. Oh, she my boo, my everything. 
yeah, you laugh, but that's how y'all talk. You're sliding into DMs. I mean, she's my boo. She's everything to me. Pastor Mark, you don't understand. I love her. You love her? What do you love about her? Her face, her body. And it's very simple. My friend, you lust her. You don't love her. You want to love her? I love the way that she worships. I love the way that she puts God before she puts me. I love the way that she, she takes time out of her day. I love sometimes I don't matter because Jesus matters, and that's okay with me. And girls, the same goes the other way. If you don't have a guy who's leading you spiritually, bye bye And we can laugh at it, but can I just tell you this? It's reality. Love the way in which Jesus loved. There was a guy by the name of, of Jack Benny, and when he was younger, he was a pretty shy guy. Any shy people in the room? And I'm going to end with this. He was a shy, we'll call him a shy fellow, because that's just a fun word to use sometimes. And one day while he was at work, he saw this girl. Some of you are like, I know where you're going with this. He saw this girl and he almost went and he talked to her. Have you ever had that happen where you're like, I'm going to talk to her today. You're like, I'm going to talk to him today. Like, oh my gosh. He walked by me. I smelt him. He just got out of practice, but I don't care. He still smells so good. And one day, uh, Jack was going to go talk to this girl and wimped out. You ever went out before? Struggle bus. All right. He's like, he's like, can we have an altar call right now? But he had an idea. He said, okay, I don't, I can't talk to her yet, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send her a rose tomorrow. So she shows up to work and there is a rose that is on her desk. And she looks at it, didn't didn't think much of it. And the next day she shows up to work and there's another rose on her desk. The next day she shows up and there's another rose on her desk. And she finally goes to the florist that's name is on the bouquet or the, the, the sleeve that's holding the flowers. And she says, I've, can I ask you a question? Uh, this rose has been delivered. A rose has been delivered to my job for the last three days. And I saw that it's your company. Could you tell me who delivered this rose? And, looks and he says it was a, a, a man by the name of Jack Benny and she said he works with me so she goes back to the office and says Jack have you been sending me a rose every day for the last three days and probably in that moment he's like Ew. Uh, he's like goofy Ew. you know watch a lot of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse okay so he says yes I have and she says why didn't you just talk to me he said I was too shy I was too nervous I was too scared she said, well, you can still talk to me. He goes, okay. He said, would you like to go to dinner? She said, yes, I'd love to go to dinner. So they go to dinner. They have a great time. The next day she shows up at work and there's a rose on her desk. And the next day there's a rose. And the next day there's a rose. And they're officially dating at this point. So she thinks the roses are going to stop every day. There's a rose that is delivered to her. Then comes the day where my man drops down on one knee. I haven't seen any guys taking notes tonight until this moment. Right? Rose every day. Okay. He proposes to her and says, will you marry me? And she says, yes, I'll marry you. And so she thinks the roses are going to stop the next day a rose comes. And the next day a rose comes. <laughs> Girls, I, I found this story on the internet. I don't know if it's real, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Shh. I'm just kidding. He proposes and 
Still as they're engaged, a rose comes every day. And finally the day where, the day where they get married, she thinks the roses are going to stop. But they don't. They're married for years. Shh. Until a day where Jack passes away. Guys, everybody dies. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. Hey, okay, we've had fun. The next day she wakes up and there's a rose that's on her doorstep. And so she thinks, you know, clearly the florist has not heard what's happened. And so she goes and she says, hey, you don't, you don't I don't know, my husband has passed away. And so he goes, I know your, your husband passed away. He said, but he's arranged that a rose is delivered to you every single day for the rest of your life. It is a lot of money, okay? <laughs> hey, shh. But can I tell you something tonight? I love this story as an illustration of somebody who is willing to give their best every single day. And some of you are like, oh, that's such a great story. That's so amazing. I wish I had somebody like that in my life. Can I tell you, you do? Every day, God says, I have the very best for you. I have everything that you need. You're like, I know, but I want a rose. I want a rose. I love flowers. I'll tell you this, Jesus loves you more than any man ever could. Shh, more than any woman ever could. And I've seen a lot of people hear me out for the next couple minutes and I'm done. I won't joke anymore, I promise. A lot of people get in relationships that they have no business being in. And heartbreak happens. Or they get married when they have no business getting married and divorce takes place and happens. And I'm a firm believer that in most, maybe if not all cases, it's because there was a disconnect with the Heavenly Father in one or both people. Can I tell you this? You want to have a healthy, great relationship, maybe with, with, with the opposite sex or healthy, great friendships. It starts with a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. And I just want you to understand this there's really been one point to this whole message tonight, and that's for you to understand that you and Jesus need to be okay before you can be okay with anybody else. And I truly believe that there are a lot of individuals in this room tonight, you're going, I am not good right now. Myself, I'm not good. I'm not. I'm struggling. I'm going through some things. Maybe I've taken a couple steps back in my relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? It's not by accident that you're here tonight. God wants to be in community with you more than you could ever imagine. And some of you have let some things people have said or have done to you draw you away from the love of God. And God says, tonight I want you to come back to me. Do me a favor. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, everybody in this room? Pastor Mark, you say, that's me. That's me. There's been a disconnect. I'm not good. I'm not okay right now. I need God's forgiveness. I need his help. I need his guidance. I need his wisdom. I need direction. I need Jesus right now in my life. That's you. I want you to look at me. Yep, yep. I need help. I need him right now. I'm not okay with everybody else. I don't love myself. I have issues, I have problems. I wake up every morning, I look in the mirror and I don't love myself because things I've done. I'm gonna give you five more seconds. Here's the great part, God's grace is sufficient to meet all of our needs. And God wants to meet you right where you're at. Three more seconds. There's somebody in here. You have yet to look at me. There's a lot of people that looked at me tonight, and this is what I want to do. If 
everyone can stand to their feet.